Hello, good morning. Welcome sa ating uh, Family Matters Live for Part 2 of ng ating uh, subject matter na Internal Restructural Organization of a Family. Uh, just to remind us all, last uh, kahapon po, we have discussed the role of a father on a Christian family uh, and now we will be discussing about the role of the mother over the family and our verse the Bible verse uh, ay matatagpuan po natin ulit sa chapter 5 ng Ephesians verses 22 hanggang 33 po and also sa chapter 6 naman po uh, verses 1 to 4 ulitin ko lang po para ma-remind po tayo sinasabi po dito wives submit to your husband as to the Lord for the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church his body which he is a savior now as the church submit to Christ so also wives should submit to their husband in everything husband love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy cleansing her by the washing with water through the word and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In this same way, husband ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated his own body, but he feeds and cares for it just as Christ does with the church for we are members of one of his body for this for this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and the two will become one flesh this is a profound mystery but i am talking about Christ and the church however Each one of you also must love his wife as he loved himself, and the wife must respect the husband. Again, sa chapter 6, verse 1 to 4, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on earth. Father, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. So, yan po yung ating um, uh, Bible verse concerning our topic for today. For this vlog number 4, part 2, na ang title po natin ay uh, Internal Structural Organization Kapon po then we have reminded you, uh, just some sort of review, that the family is the foundational institution of society ordained by God. It is constituted by marriage and composed of persons related to one another by marriage and blood adoption. So yung pong marriage which will try to build a family is constituted by God. Uh, an institution of the society ano po, na pinorm ng ating Panginoon. So that's why uh, the family structure internally should be organized in accordance with what the Bible is talking about, what the Lord is saying about a family. How should a family be organized and be built? Ano po? At nabanggit din po natin kahapon that family plays a vital role 
in every society kasi po doon nga po manggagaling yung ating mga future leaders of the country no po if we manage to build up a strong family a strong children secured emotionally and a well-rounded children definitely po magiging maganda ang kinabukasan ng ating pamilya hindi lamang pamilya natin kundi the the the, the our country as a whole no po So yun po yung vital impo, uh, vital uh, element of having a, a, a future of good goodness and blessed full future ng ating government. If we have managed as a family, as a parents, managed to to build up strong children uh, in all sense of the word. Now, ang ating pong area of uh, this discussion uh, eh, kapon po about the father, the role of a father on a Christian family. Today po naman, uh, we will be talking about the mother. The characteristic of a godly mother. <clears throat> of course, we are we very well know that the woman plays an important role in building a family. Uh, from the very beginning pa lang po, yung, yung, yung conceiving a child for nine months no po, and giving birth is the essence of one of the essence of being a woman. No po. Yan po yung number one. Uh, number one essence of being a woman. Delivering a baby And it doesn't end there. No po. Yung beauty ng isang uh, ng isang mag inang isang ina, no po. Giving birth to a son or a daughter. After that po, nadagdagan pa yung essence ng pagiging babae niya, no po. Yung uh, pagpapalaki ng mga anak, no po. Uh, hindi lamang po isa, minsan dalawa yan, minsan tatlo, minsan apat, yun na po, ibang ina, minsan labing dalawa yung anak, ganyan po. So, yung vastness ng responsibility ng isang ina and the essence of being a woman, no po, doon pa lang sa delivering a baby and rearing no po, a baby, a child, napakalaki na pong plus factor para sa kababaihan to be able to play the most important role of being a mother. Not only that, no po, uh, yung, pong, uh, yung pong pagmamahal ng isang babae sa asawa, sa kanyang, as- sa kanyang husband, na very challenging din po because uh, it's important na patuloy na mag-flame ang pagmamahal sa loob ng tahanan no po, ng, ng, ng lahat ng membro ng pamilya. And other factors na every little little chores or responsibility inside the house is dependent on a mother. No Siya po yung talagang may responsibilidad sa mga bagay na ito. Actually po sa sa pag-aalaga pa lang lalo na kung nag-aaral ng mga anak no po at yung pag-aasikasa ng loob ng pamamahay ng anak ay ng ng bahay it's a big responsibility na sa ating mga ina ng ating mga tahanan. So we could say on that aspect na the mother plays a very important no po role in the family. At uh, yung pong life niya is becoming uh, bigger and bigger and bigger. Na, nai-stretch po yung capabilities ng ating mga ina in dealing with everyday life of a family. So, doon po, uh, doon po lumalabas yung isang katotohanan na yung ating mga ina ilaw ng tahanan. 
Sila po yung ilaw ng tahanan. With their presence alone, with their loving kindness to to their sons and daughter and to the husband, sila po yung nagsisilbing liwanag ng tahanan. Yun po yung res- pinakamalaking responsibility ng, ng isang ina. Kaya po yung babae pag nag-asawa, lumalaki po yung mundo niya. Lumalawak yung, 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 yung pananaw sa buhay. Dahil he will going to tend and to rear children that was a gift of God to the family sa kanilang, sa, sa kanilang mag-asawa. And it uh, takes a lot of responsibility, a lot of love, a lot, a lot of patience, a lot of resilience, and a lot of energy and motivation to be able to perform the task ng isang magul, ng isang ina sa isang araw lamang. So, what are the characteristics of a godly mother? Mothers are important not only to the family but to society as well. Kasi po yung family, uh, yung, yung family is instituted by God no po. Na napakahalagang uh, parte po siya ng isang society. Nasabi po natin yan many times. Na napakatotoo po dahil totoong uh, sa ating pamilya, yung mga leaders po natin In the future, baka yung mga anak po natin ang mga future leaders. So we have to make sure that our children was able to 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 learn the values and right characteristics of being a person who is responsible in every areas of his life. So the mothers are important not only to the family but to society as well. Regardless of any challenges you may face in your relationship, uh, yun, no? while you were growing up, she was given to you by God, the mother, and played an essential role in your life. Even in scripture, we find all kinds of mothers, and many of them show valuable characteristic of godliness. Timothy isa po sa mga apostoles, had a godly mother and a grandmother who greatly influenced him that he follow in their footstep of faith. So si Timothy po ay merong godly mother and godly grandmother. At uh, sinundan po ni Timothy yung steps, no? yung mga pamamaraan ng kanyang ina at ng kanyang lola tungkol sa pananampalataya nito. So nagising si Timothy no po, na yung nanay niya at yung grandmother niya is have a great faith in the Lord. When the Apostle Paul wrote to encourage Timothy as he led the church in Ephesus, he described Timothy's faith's heritage this way, For I am mindful of the sincere faith within you, which first dwell in your grandmother Louise, and your mother Eunice, and I am sure that it is in you as well. So yun po yung sinabi ni Apostle Paul kay Timothy. Naniniwala siya na yung, uh, yung kay Timothy na yung pananampalataya ni, ni Timothy ay mas, mataas at uh, malalim dahil sa kanyang grandmother na si Louis at ang kanyang mother na si Eunice. So nagamit po si Timothy bilang isa sa mga alagad ng Diyos because the faith was there even from the beginning when he opened his eyes, nakita niya na po yung nanay at kanyang lola na merong great faith in our God. The characteristic of a, a godly mother. Mothers are characterized in many different ways based on external beauty, wealth, or accomplishment. But the most important quality of a mom is godliness. This doesn't mean perfection, but she has an, a quality that serves an important model for her children. No woman will completely express every single one of these characteristics. But the ideal godly mother is one who is growing 
in all these ways. Kung ano pa yung mga ways na yun. A godly mother prays, prays and read the word of God. Uh, so ito po yung isa sa mga karakteristik. Dapat daw po yung ina ay nagbabasa ng salita ng Diyos at nag- nananalangin. This is not an occasional practice but has become the habit of her life. She believes in scriptures, the word of God, and knows its instruction will help her become a better wife and mother. In fact, prayer and Bible reading affects every area of her life. How she dresses, handles herself, and work. Her conversation, character, and conduct are rooted in the Word of God and her children are a reflection of this. So, yun pong uh, isa sa mga karakteristik ng godly mother is a mother who is praying and reading the Word of God na nakikita ng mga anak niya na naniniwala siya sa mga salita ng Diyos at higit sa lahat may pananampalataya sa, sa Panginoon. <coughs> Excuse me. At ang kanyang pamamaraan ay nai-emulate ng kanyang mga anak. Nakakapi po yung kanyang pamamaraan dahil isa siyang uh, nananampalataya sa Panginoon. At sumusunod sa mga binabasa niya sa banal na kasulatan. Nakikita po ng mga anak yun. At sinusundan po nila yun. Opo. Habang maliit sila, they were exposed to their mother with a great faith to God and reading the words of God and follow instruction of the word of God. So, yun po yung number one. Yun po. Uh, number two, characteristic of a godly mother. She is a mother who has learned to trust God for every need. Because she is praying, reading, and meditating on the word of God, she came to know and trust God promises. She is confident that He will meet her needs, whether physical, material, or emotional. Instead of focusing on what she lacks, she speaks of God's sufficiency in her life and is grateful whether He provides much or little. little. So, yun po, uh, yung, yung a godly mother is uh, learn to trust God in every areas of the family or, or, or of her life and uh, nag na na expose po ito to kanyang pagtitiwala sa Panginoon sa nangyayari sa 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 pamilya at yung kanyang pananampalataya that the God will provide all the needs of the family whether material or if spiritual whether big or small nakikita po ng kanyang mga anak na ina-appreciate ng kanilang ina ang Panginoon at nakadepende sa Panginoon ang lahat ng kanilang pangangailangan na po materially and spiritually and emotionally and the mother a godly mother appreciate the blessing of the Lord whether the God provide a small much or little blessing uh, no matter what how No matter what the blessing are, nakikita ng mga anak na nagpapasalamat ang kanilang ina sa Panginoon sa lahat ng meron sila na binibigay ng Diyos. So, yun po yung pangalawa. And uh, our third characteristic of a godly mother is that a godly mother is generous. Even she has little to share, she willing, willingly offers it to others. Sometimes, Her generosity comes from the form of encouragement. Her desire is to offer words that builds up others rather than tear them down. Her example of generosity towards her family as well as to others set a pattern for her children to follow in her footsteps. So yung pong godly mother daw is very generous, not only to the family, but to others. Yung pong being generous dito, ay uh, hindi lamang uh, hindi lamang about money or material things na i-share natin sa ating mga anak or even to others no po 
hindi lang po yung material blessing yung ma-share natin that shows our generosity. Sinasabi po dito, even words of encouragement because this woman is a woman of God, a mother that trusted the Lord. So yung encouragement niya po in facing her life, minsan po, pwede na isa-share niya sa iba. Yung, po, yung, yung generosity of of sharing about her belief, no? pwede niya po, it is an act also of generosity na makapag-share siya ng encouragement and sharing the word of God to others, that is also generosity. Yung pagiging generosity po, it, it doesn't mean only money, but in the words of encouragement, in the words of concern towards others, and most especially to the family. Nakikita po ito ng mga bata sa paglaki nila, and they will follow that kind of uh, footsteps na ginagawa ng isang ina. Ang susunod po natin, she is obedient to God. Obedience honor God and is also profitable for her as well as for her children and husband. She understands that she is obeying all powerful, omniscient, loving God who she can trust. Her goal is to obey the Lord and leave the consequences to Him. There is no need to worry because she knows He can handle any situation. She brings all her cares and concern to God and leaves them in his capable hands. Even when the issues are serious, she can sleep without being troubled by anxious thought. A godly mother who trusts and obeys God gives her home an atmosphere of freedom, welcome, and love because she is not stressed by worry. Even difficulties at home cannot disrupt the peaceful atmosphere of the family for long. So, ito po, yung pong obedience, yung ating, yung ating pong ina, na po, one of the characteristic of uh, a godly mother is she is obedient to the Lord. Ang number one challenge po ng obedience ng isang ina sa Panginoon, yung pong binasa natin that you must submit to your husband. Na po. Uh, ito po yung number one na, na nire-require ng Panginoon. The moment that you get married, that the woman should submit to her husband. No po? At sa society natin ngayon, alam natin na nababaliktad na ang sitwasyon. No po? Pero yun po yung number one na, na instruction ng Panginoon na challenge sa ating mga kababaihan uh, starting a family. You, the, you have to submit to your husband. No po? Uh, in every areas of life hindi hindi pili hindi yung by choice lang o anong area lang ganito lang ganyan pero pagdating sa sa ilang bagay ang as, ang babae pa rin ang parang nagiging leader of the house one of the challenge that you have to face no po, if you are obedient to God's words and instruction God is giving the woman no po, an instruction to to submit to their husband in every areas of their lives regardless of anything regardless kung yung ating asawa ay hindi pa mana ng palataya no o hindi pa nakakakilala sa Panginoon there's no reason for you not to follow the instruction that every wife should submit to their husband ngayon po, kasi po yung, yung ang Diyos ay nakikipag-usap sa head of the family, which is our husband. Ngayon po, ngayon po yung ating pong asawa ay uh, hindi pa isang mano ng palataya. Or sabihin na natin, hindi naman a well-rounded person. Tapos tayo po, yung mga babae naman po is coming from a well-rounded uh, family and, a well-rounded, and has a, a, a well-rounded personality. Parang challenge po yun, di po ba? na parang magsasabit ka sa isang tao, uh, alam naman natin kung, kung, kung nasa Panginoon or medyo weak in, in a certain way. Pero that is not a reason no po, para hindi ka magsubmit sa Panginoon as instructed by the Lord. You have still to submit to your husband. No po. At ang Panginoon po ang bahala doon. You come to the Lord with all the weaknesses of the husband, 
no po? And remind the Lord that you instructed me to submit to my husband and I want to do it and I want to do it. No po? Pero ito po yung ano. So, God, please help my husband to be a real head of the family. Kaya po, walang ifs and buts yung pagsunod sa Panginoon, especially doon sa major area ng, 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 ng buhay ng isang ina at ay, ng isang tatay at saka ng nanay. Ng nanay do po, na kailangan mag-submit yung wife, regardless of circumstances, sa husband. Because the Lord will be talking to the father, the head of the family, kung saan direksyon dapat papunta ang pamilya. So, yun po yung number one na, na, na obedience ng isang kasawang babae sa Panginoon. And of course, yun pong ating mga anak is uh, we have to obey uh, to the instruction of the Lord po, na pangalagaan ng ina ang kanyang mga anak. And through her kind of life na, po, na nakikita ng mga anak kasi po mas maraming oras na magkasama ang mga anak at sa isang ina. Ano po? Uh, mas maraming oras na magkasama sila. So, uh, yung pong karakteristik ng a godly mother ay nalilipat po na sa, sa nakikita ng mga anak. Ang nakikita na, ng mga anak yung magagandang karakteristik. Yun po yung ini-emulate nila and they will copy it. So, nasa atin po yun. Po. At sinasabi po dito na even on the harder situation of life, po, ay kailang mapanatili ang tahanan ng kapayapaan na nagbimula sa Panginoon. Kasi katulad nga nung sinabi natin na, po, na isa sa mga karakteristik ng Panginoon, dependent po kasi tayo dapat sa Panginoon. And when we submit every affairs of the house, every affairs of the house, every needs of the house, every problems of the house, every stressful situation of the house, of the house when we submit everything into the Lord, to the Lord, with trust and confidence that He will going to, to, to answer and to give solution to every problem and to give provision for everything that we need. Dapat po, uh, we are at peace even during these times of trying hard to cope up with the daily life. Dapat po nasa peaceful sanctuary tayo ng ating Panginoon because we believe deep down inside of us na ipagkakaloob ng Diyos ang lahat ng sagot sa challenges natin sa pang-araw-araw na pamilihan. And when our children see the way you handle situation, ano po, yung calmness and peace na kikita nila, may emulate pa rin po nila yun, ma-absorb pa rin po nila yun, and they will uh, copy it. So, when they grow up and they will be at your position, dala-dala po nila yung character building na yun. Na this is how my mother faced all the circumstances of life in calmness and peace. So, may malaki o maliit na problema ang ating pananampalataya bilang isang ina ay nakasubmit sa Panginoon that He will provide and answer whatever your trials and challenges and needs are at the moment. So, even if there are challenges and trials, nakikita po ng, 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 ng ating mga anak yung all throughout the day, we still at peace with ourselves and with our God na in whatever circumstances the Lord will going to show up and give solutions and provision for everything that we need. Yan po. At ang susunod po ng ma, uh, character ng godly mother is a mother who's godly is forgiving. This is essential for every follower of Jesus and is clearly taught in the Bible. Those who refuse to forgive remain in stress and tension and soon overflow into the home. Forgiveness is a vital part of family life because the close relationship inevitably um, 
result mis- in misunderstanding and conflict. However, living with a difficult person is no excuse for having an unforgiving spirit. Forgiveness can restore peace and eliminate stress and tension in the home. Furthermore, all believers are told in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32, Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, tender-hearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. So yun po, uh, ito, to, ito po napaka-importanting uh, factor that we should, uh, that our mother and even our father should have, yung pong forgiving heart. In our daily lives, uh, as a mother or as a father, and even our children, they are facing a lot of challenges. Then, yung nanay, may challenges yan, may trials. Yung tatay din meron, ganun po. At yung ating, lalo na yung ating mga anak, no po, uh, habang lumalaki sila, they are starting to face the world, no po. At yung battle nila, no po, ay lumalaki din. So, There will be time that uh, they will be doing something na madedestroy o masyashatter yung, yung ating pong pagkatao because of some faults or sins that they had committed. No po. Especially between the husband and the wife. No po. Misan po, mas malali, mas masakit. Like for example, nag, ng babae yung, uh, yung lalaki or sabihin natin yung babae rin. Minsan, may nangyayari ganyan. Tapos yun naman po pag inom-inom ng ano, pagbabarkada. At hindi mga anak natin, somehow, minsan, uh, hindi sila nakapokus sa studies nila. Sometime negligent sila in performing their contribution task in everyday work in the house. No? Uh, if, uh, kahit sa studies nila. So, meron po mga pagkakataon na na, na challenge po yung ating ano, pagkananay po. And uh, sasabihin po natin, ang dami-dami ko ng problema, dinadagdagan niyo pa, ganyan, ganyan. So, whatever serious problem it is, no, uh, na nagawa ng bawat isa, sabihin na natin, each and every one of the family sometimes committed some blunder in their decision and choices. No, po. And it leads them somehow to sin. And when they sin, yung nanay po yung unang nakakadama ng sakit lalo na para pag nabibigo tayo sa ating mga pangarap sa ating mga anak. Normally po, yan yung nagdududot sa ating ng hapdi ng ating puso bilang mga magulang at lalo na bilang isang ina because you are in direct uh, 24/7 uh, involved in every affairs of your sons and daughter and your husband. No po. Plus yourself pa. So ang, ang daming uh, weight ng isang babae ng pagiging isang ina. So, misan, may mga pagkakataon nga na nagkakasala o nakakagawa ng hindi maganda ang ilang membro ng pamilya. And it blocks our heart. Para pong sometimes, uh, nadi-disappoint tayo. Lalo na kung major yung, yung maling desisyon o nagawa ng sino mga membro ng pamilya. Yung pong nanay at saka yung tatay din po ay nasasaktan. And also, may nagagawa din po tayong mali sa ating mga anak in performing our as parents. So, hindi po nawawala yung mga sitwasyon na trying to somehow destroy the unity of the family. No po, the oneness of the family. Pero ang sinasabi po dito, dapat po, ang ina ay mayroong forgiving heart. No po. At siguro po, ganun din sa ama, ganun din sa mga anak. Kung sino man po ang nagkasala sa isa't isa. We should always have the heart that is forgiving dahil alam naman po natin na challenge yung magbuo ng isang uh, responsabling pamilya no po napakahirap po no because kung lima ang anak mo those are different kahit kadugo na po natin yan those are individual character no po unique individual character tapos yung asawa yung yung uh, babae o lalaki na pinagsama sa isang bubong at nagko-compose ng isang pamilya with different uniqueness from one another. Despite of the same blood is running on our veins are the same, 
Pero individual pa rin po tayong kinrik ng ating Panginoon. Opo? May uniqueness sa bawat isa sa atin. Despite of the fact that you are a member of one family. Every person is uniquely designed by God. So, dahil din po sa katotohanan na yun, we could expect when we put people together with different characters and uniqueness, definitely, meron pong uh, a battle of ideas, of opinions, and everything like that. So, much probably than not, no, situation that will challenge us, one another, will shaken our heart. And that situation come in, we should always be forgiving to one another as a family and even in other person. If we have managed to learn forgiveness in the family, madadala po din natin ito, especially ng mga anak natin, na sa atin po, pamilya pa lang, pero dapat we should learn to forgive one another. No? Uh, ano mang, dis, ano mang uh, disagreement meron, or gano mang kasakit ang nagawa ng isang member ng bawat isa. What more? Kung yung ating mga anak ay lalabas sa, sa mundo outside the family where there il, they will be interacting with a lot of unique personality. Kaya may challenge din po yung mga anak natin. At kung meron nang mangyari sa kanila na, na somehow ay nasaktan sila dahil marunong silang magpatawad na natutunan nila sa loob ng bahay at nakita nila sa isang ina nila o sa ama nila, madadala din po nila yung for, meron po sila baon-baon every time that they are exposed to their environment, to their schools or group of friends no po, or uh, organization that they were involved with, no po, dala-dala po nila yung forgiving heart nila na, na nandun na yung expectation na they will not be uh, in one mind and heart always because they are different, unique uh, person na create ni Lord. So, everybody should have a forgiving heart, not only the mother, but with our discussion, we're talking about the mother because of her big role inside the family. Dapat po may maraming forgiving heart ang ating mga ina. Uh, yung forgiveness po ay uh, kinonfer doon sa sa ating Diyos Ama no? at sa, yung, sa ating Diyos uh, si Yeso Cristo na namatay sa ating mga kasalanan. To forgive our sin. To erase every bit of sins in our body. Christ died for us and the God the Father gave His Son no po, as an offer and sacrifice to erase, totally eliminate our sins. No po. So, ganun din po yung forgiving heart na iniinsak ng Panginoon sa bawat member ng pamilya, especially to the mother that we are discussing about. Na dapat po merong ganung kalaking forgiving heart ang ina. And that goes well also with every member of the family. A godly mother has an attitude of persistence. When something needs to be accomplished, she knows what required and keeps working until it is finished. Instead of waiting for someone else to do it, she jumped in to complete the task. Persistence applies to relationship as well as work. It is easy, it is easy to stop communicating or, or walk away from difficulties in a relationship. But a godly mother doesn't give up. She keeps loving even when things are not going the way she desires. Instead of giving into discouragement, she turns to God in prayer, asking Him to pour a pure heart and a forgiving spirit. A mother of a young child is an example of persistence. No matter how many times she must get up in the middle of the night to care for the child, she does it. God has placed within the heart of a mother a willingness to do whatever her child needs. And a godly mother faces life's demand without pausing, nagging, groaning, or comparing her situation with other circumstances. She is determined to be the person God wants her to be. 
So, yung pong mother po, dapat po may persistence siya in every matters of the, the family affairs. Uh, like yung sa pag-aaral ng mga anak. Minsan po, meron, meron tayong mga anak na uh, ang hirap i-motivate to, to, to be the best of their the better of the best of their personality. Yun po yung parating goal natin that that were each and every one of our children to somehow uh, be somebody sometimes after studying, di ba? So of course, that is a good that is a good dream and objective and goal for every children of the family. So misan po may namimit tayong ganyan na hindi ganun kapusigi sa isang mga bagay-bagay. But a mother, a mother's heart is persistent to inject and push yung anak na yun to do his best and to be the better person of himself. So talaga pong hindi mawawala yun. Itutulak at itutulak natin ng ating mga anak to be a better person, to be a better version of themselves. That is all parents dream sa ating mga anak. Uh, so, yung pong, yung pong inano din to na minsan din ay going beyond her self to be able to accomplish. No po? Maraming ganyang sitwasyon sa buhay ng na, nating mga magulang na I still remember uh, isa sa mga anak namin uh, was on the waiting list sa uh, isang school. No po, sa waiting list sa isang school. No po, and uh, uh, ginawa namin lahat ang magagawa namin ng araw ng asawa. Na to, 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 to move forward more para ma, maipasok namin dun sa, sa, sa school na yon at dun sa klase ng, ng course sa gusto namin anak. We move every mountain kasi nasa waiting list. So we move every mountain. We, we talk to a lot of people on that school. We make letter, we make everything, we explain everything. At yun po, na po uh, natang, nakuha po yung mga yung anak namin explaining na ito yung desire ng anak namin that it was his uh, uh, ambition, his goal even during the time na nasa high school. Po. And He wants to be in that school for the longest period of time. Pinangarap niya to be in that school. So, yun pa rin. Uh, nangyari po yun. And the same son that we have. Uh, kailangan pa siyang mag-aral ng another, another, another course no po, to, to, to be solid in, in, her career, in his career. No So, uh, since yung school na po na, na pinasukan niya ay part na rin po ng mga kilalang school, not only in the Philippines, but also recognized international. So, kailangan po ipasok siya ng another course. Pero dapat the same level of school pa rin po. Medyo mahirap po rin yun na, especially when we talk about big, big and well-known university, we need a lot of Uh, money, di po ba, as a tuition fee. But ganun yun po yung mga magulang. They will do everything. They will do everything to give what their children want. Di po. I, maski po minsan hindi nila gusto, pero naiisip natin mga magulang na mas maganda kung dito. Na mas maganda kung ito gawin mo. Ganyan. So, pinasok pa din po namin siya, despite of the, the hardship na sa laki ng tuition fee. Di po pinasok pa rin po namin siya dun sa ka-level ng school na pinag, pinagtapusan niya sa kanyang first course. Sa level niya, o medyo mas mataas pa. And that helps him uh, now with his uh, career advancement. No po. Hindi po siya pwedeng tanggihan. No po. And when you assess his credential sa lahat ng international assessing uh, grades ng na recognized in the world ay maganda po yung assessment na lumalabas sa kanyang POR, sa kanyang creden- school credentials. Dahil din po doon. So, where, bisan, uh, ito po yung persistence na 
to make it a solid ground for our na dapat natin ibigay sa ating mga anak. Listen, we step higher and higher more to be able to accomplish that. Ito ba yung persistence no? na we pushing our children to accomplish or even in a task in, at home. Minsan mahirap na mahirap yung sitwasyon. Pero dapat po may, may persistent attitude ang mga edad na sa kabila ng mga hurdles or the bumps that they are facing daily, they were pushing themselves or the situation to the to the fullest upang ma-reach po yung, yung complete, completeness ng what has to be done on a single day. Kaya po yun, kailangan po ganyan. Basta yung pong persistence natin and resilience natin over the matter at hand ay hindi po labag sa kagustuhan ng Diyos. But uh, we will do everything. Yung, yung, yung mga ina na may persistent kind of attitude they will climb every mountain to do and to give everything no po, and finish the task that they think is better for their children or for the entire family. So, ganun po yun. No? Dapat po, uh, in, uh, at dapat daw po yung persistency ng ating mga ina at ng every member of the family should be that the, the trust is still in God's hands. Dahil po in, persist, in being persistent on a matter na po, over our family, uh, hindi lamang po dyan yung kagustuhan natin, kundi dapat nakadepend pa rin tayo sa Panginoon. And, and, and if the Lord sees the purpose and the intention of the heart is clear, na po, He will make a way. Kasi kahit po i-insist natin o i-persist natin, na po, pero kung hindi naman po nababata ito sa kagustuhan ng Panginoon, still it will not happen. Kaya dapat po, yung ating parang nag pupumili tayo, yung kung nagpupumili tayo to accomplish something for our family, dapat po nakadepend pa rin tayo sa Panginoon for giving us the resources like yung pag-aaral, for giving us the resources to be able to achieve what are the, yung pinupus natin na mangyari. It should be yung trust natin and confidence and resources should be uh, attached to the Lord that the Lord will make a way. So that when it happens, we give glory to God, not only to ourselves. Dear Kuya. And uh, a godly mother is a servant. This is a quality we should all have as followers of Jesus Christ because He was a servant. A mother with a servant attitude doesn't live for herself but for others. She serves her family in a variety of ways remembering that she is following in Christ's footsteps. She doesn't seek reward or serve only in what is convenient or when she feels like it. She surrenders that that in serving her family, she is serving the Lord. Napakaganda po nito. Uh, totoo po ito. Definitely, the mother po, yung nanay po natin, ay, uh, should have a servant spirit. Kasi wala siya gagawin sa buhay niya kundi pagsimbihan yung, yung mga anak niya at saka yung asawa niya. Minsan nakakalimutan niya na yung, nakakalimutan niya na yung sasarili niya na magsuklay o kaya maligo. Di po ba? Uh, kasi sa umaga pa lang, sa umaga pa lang, ang mga ina natin umaandar na ang isip. No? Uh, umaandar na ang isip at uh, nagpa-plano na. No, breakfast pa lang, pagpo-prepare ng breakfast na ano, uh, yan. At tapos yung magagagamitin ng mga anak sa school, padating na yung school bus, tapos kung yung asawa nagtatrabaho, yung baon ng asawa, damit ng asawa. Tapos pag umalis na yung mga bata, dumating na yung school bus, na ihatid na sa school yung mga bata, at pumasok na si husband. Yung naiwang mess up in the morning ng pagkakagulo ng preparation sa school, yung mga bata, di ba? The rooms ng mga bata, ganyan, yung mga hinigaan nila, yung mga maruruming damit nila, yun naman ang haharapin ng isang ina, di po ba? Na ayusin yung mga iniwan so that when the, when the children comes back, they will be relieved no ba? and they will, and they can take take rest no? as if they are in heaven. Kami po na hindi, ganun yung nagiging ano namin, yung wife ko po, nagiging palatuntunan namin. 
we want our children when when they came from came back from school at yung husband especially our husband babalik po sila sa isang lugar na they can rest and be at peace after a hard day in school and a hard day at work natin mga sa at hindi lamang po yan we wanted to prepare yung pong masarap na pagkain na pagsasalusaluhan natin ng buong pamilya kaya po yung ina dapat ma-appreciate natin na na katulad niyo din po yung mga anak na nagtrabaho na po at o kaya nag-aral tapos umuwi na po o yung husband naman po dapat din ma-appreciate talaga yung wife na kung siya man napagod doon sa trabaho niya at uh, nag nakamit ng challenges the wife also in the house kasi po yung pagiging mother is a full-time career na po wala lang pong sweldo yan na po wala lang pong sweldo pero Uh, it's a full-time career. We cannot deny that. That without mothers at home, all can become messy for in our lives. Kaya po sabi dito, the mother should have a servant heart. Dahil ang dami niyang paglilingkuran. Ang servant po ay uh, a servant heart po. Bisan po nakakalimutan niya yung sarili niya. At uh, pinaglilingkuran niya po ang iba. Pero nakakalimutan niya yung sarili niya. Ganyan din po yung mga yung mga ina natin. Kaya dapat po tayo yung mga anak at saka mga asawa, we should give thankful. We should be thankful no? and and remind that our love and gratitude sa ating asawa na binigay ng Diyos. No? Kasi even, it is not only for the wife, but also for every member of the family. When we are doing service for the family, And everything, even in the society, even outside in our environment, when we give service to others because of we have a servant heart, let us not wait for a gratitude or whatever in return. But doing the service to others or being a servant to others, I, I, we are doing the kind of servant heart na ginawa ni Cristo sa atin na na Josya no po Josya pero nagpakababa siya at minit niya yung level natin no po pero dapat hindi na po siya mahirapan but because ay mahal niya tayo at meron siyang puso na ng, ng, ng pagsisilbi sa kanyang puso it cost him his life his death no po upang mapaglikuran tayong lahat. And that cost his life and give us the gift of salvation. Yun po. So dapat po, may ganun tayong puso. At tinitignan po ng Panginoon, yung ina, yung mga anak, yung asawa, and everybody, and every one of us outside the family. What is the intention of the heart in doing so? Parati pong tumitingin ng Panginoon sa puso natin. Ano ba intention mo? To be famous? To be uh, al- parang above everybody else? Kaya mo ginagawa yan? For fame? Uh, para makilala ka? Para... Hindi po alam na dyan. Oh, gumagawa ka niyan dahil talagang you have the servant heart. That you are doing this as if you are doing it not for men but for the Lord. Yun po yung servant who the sinasabi dito. And another Another point po ng a godly mother, she lives an orderly life. For a family life to run smoothly, there must be organization, especially when children are in school since there are a schedule to keep and tasks to complete. Without order in the family, there is confusion, frustration, anxiety, tension, and stress. Furthermore, An orderly life is something children need to learn in order to function well as an adult. That's why it is so important to model it at home because children tend to pick up attitudes and habits from their parents. They need to develop characteristics that will build and enrich their life. So, yung po daw mga asawa natin, that should be in order. Maski po yung 
yung ating Diyos, God is a God of order. Nasa Bible po yan. God is a God of order. Dapat po, parang another another way dapat ng, ng, ng the aspect of being order, or very orderly. Siguro po, we could connect it to being a good steward of God's blessing. Like sa bahay po, dapat daw po maging maayos tayo. Actually, sa budget natin, dapat maging maayos tayo. We should know what are the needs first, then what are the wants only. Siyempre, ang paprioritize natin, it's yung need because you own yung, yung, yung talagang pangailangan. So that is being orderly in your budget and everything that you need. So po, tapos po yung mga yung mga kagamitan ng ating mga anak, yung 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 kwarto nila, no po, yung mga books nila, ah, yun po sa sala natin, and everything that we have inside the house. We should take care of that. Not only for being orderly that requires ng isang magulang, no po, but because that is also in connection of the stewardship of God's blessing. Remember, Everything that you have inside your house, no po, material things, lahat, or or the food that you have, no po, and money that you have, we should spend it. We should uh, we should take good care of our material things, TV, uh, mga gamit sa bahay. That is because biyaya ng Diyos yan, no? Aside from being orderly, that is in connection with our being a good steward of all God's blessing, taking good care of everything, of uh, God's blessing. Dapat po yung bahay natin maayos. Pag uwi ng mga anak natin, makikita nila yung maayos yun o ng asawa natin maayos. Yung trabaho po ito ng ina, number one. Yung, yung everything is in order, nagre-requires po siya na everything is in order. Kaya nga po, meron tayong nabibiling mga organizer na yon na magagamit natin sa every part of our house so that everything will be put in order. Maski din po yung daily activities natin, we should have done uh, that on a daily basis in an orderly manner. No po? Para wala po tayong naiiwan ng mga bagay-bagay uh, na hin- nakakalimutan natin. So we have to be in order. Man- meaning, when you say you're in order, you know, in your mind or nakatake note kayo ng mga priorities nyo na dapat unahin gawin. No po? Lahat ng may schedule. No po? Y- yung time nyo at yung gagawin nyo dapat naka-schedule po yan para you wouldn't left things undone. No po? Kung nakasulat lahat yan nagagawa po yan ng in an orderly manner na makikita ng mga anak nyo na kukopyahin din po nila sa inyo yan. I, ca- I, I cannot uh, put more pressure to the wife because definitely loaded po talaga ang ina uh, sa, sa, sa lahat ng mga dapat gawin. Kung yung ina ay responsibilitad, ay responsable in facing her responsibility of being a mother. Ano ba? Yun, yun. Pero kung wala yung, ano, yung asawa naman, yung wife is not responsible enough to do her duties for the Lord and for the family, then wala, medyo may problema. Diyan ang gagaling ang mga problema. Tapos kung hindi marunong mag, mag, mag-budget ang ina, hindi niya alam yung needs against wants, eh, ma, ma, masasayang ang mga pera. Tapos yung bili ng bili, bili ng bili, ang daming binibili, pero nakatabak lamang. Di po ba? Parang that is not being a good steward. Di po? Dapat Everything that we have should be our needs na kakailanganin talaga natin to survive every day of our lives in the house. Dapat po, hindi ganun yung magulang. Yung pagiging orderly po na nare-require ng being a wife, it uh, it caters in the entire responsibility of being a wife. Dapat po ganun. And uh, yung good stewardship po, uh, magkakonekta po yung being orderly and being a good steward sa po. God's blessing. So, another point of a godly mother, a godly mother is an encourager. Encourager. Children need the encouragement of their parents so they will feel valued and loved. 
This begins early in life when a baby is held close and ex- 